Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series. And tonight we are going to be talking to Miss Rachel um, as she talks to us about her son, Malik, who was killed this day last year, 2019, and why she is still looking for justice and what she is doing to get justice for her son. Um, I posted earlier on the Speak Up and Inspire series his full name, so hopefully you were able to um, Google his name because there's a lot of articles on um, the day that he was murdered and also some follow-up articles that have been in the news. Um, you'll also see a lot of Miss Rachel's um, efforts for her son to be able to find justice for her son and just trying to figure out who it is that killed her son. Um, we're going to be talking to her tonight, um, and she has done something really special tonight in honor of the week. So we're going to get a chance to talk to her about what she did, um, be able to get some visuals of what's going on tonight and for the anniversary of his death, and just really to get to know Miss Rachel and her family and find out how we can help Rachel find justice for her son. Um, there are so many parents out there, especially here in the Queen City with the high murder rate that we have here, um, who are still looking for justice for their children. And so Miss Rachel has partnered with several organizations um, to help other mothers as well find justice for their kids. So tonight, again, we are talking to Miss Rachel. How are you doing, Miss Rachel? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I wasn't sure how um, my emotions would be on the anniversary, but definitely in good spirits today. I guess I, um, I've cried enough for everybody this entire year. Thank you so much. Understood. <laughs> Understood. Um, I know that tonight you were doing something special, so tell us what you're doing tonight. Yes, yeah, so um, I planned a um, last minute impromptu event um for um, my family and just maybe a few friends and um we had a candlelight vigil at my home um me and a friend of mine we looked at pinterest and kind of just made it happen as it as we went along and um it turned out really nice um i am wearing my t-shirt um just as for malik um there's microphones in it because my son was an artist rap artist um, and that's something that his his passion was is recording and he eventually made his own music video so um if he likes it I love it you know he's I support him for that um so I am going to uh I can show you everything I'm so proud of everything um I'm gonna turn the camera around and let's see here so um on the inside we um my camera I don't know this camera um so we uh did a string of pictures with little lights um along just different uh times of his life that's me and him at the duke um game um where the ref referee made the worst call in america and it was all all over the news the next day and me and him was there <laughs> and we had such a great time and then that's him um at double oaks when he was playing basketball and uh, yeah. I played in Charlotte for years. Um, of course, graduation, which was absolutely great. Um, and then that's the Justice from the t-shirt. Um, and then we have a picture of him and his brother. Um, and his brother hates that uh, he's got caught with that Falcons jersey because he is not a Falcons <laughs> fan. Um, that's proof that he, we had he was at some point. That's uh, him and his father um, in the gym. Um, the buff days we used to go and work out together. Mm -hmm. um, that is uh, all three of my kids. That's my daughter in the bottom, um, my oldest, my oldest right there in the burgundy top, mm -hmm. and my youngest son in the uh, black hoodie top. And that's actually our last Thanksgiving together. Mm -hmm. um, and this picture right here, I don't know what happened um, with this picture right here, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That is one for the book. So that explains his personality. And uh -huh. uh, then we have this one right here. And um, we just um, made sure, sorry about that. Can you call me? And um, fill the table with just pictures and um, just good times and try to do the best we could. And picture of him and when he was a baby. Then I'm going to take you outside real quick and show you the um 
outside where we kind of held everything and it was about 15 minutes and um, it was really nice. So it turned out really good. Thank you to Hobby Lobby, which I wasn't very excited about visiting because of who they support, but that's another subject. Um, but I had to use them because they did have everything. So, and uh, Michael, so it's a big portrait. I just blew up of um, him when he was a baby. And um, that picture, he was pulling something off the table. And I'm telling you, that kid right there, he was always doing something. And I, don't, I can't get his smile. But that smile, I tell you, he was doing something. That's when he graduated fifth grade. And um, he, first time he voted. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a story behind that because he said, Mom, I said, uh, you vote. These are the people who you vote for. And he said, Mom, it's a democracy. I said, well, in this house, it is um, dictatorship, and I'm going to tell you who to vote for. And if you don't, you might have to find another place to live. So, <laughs> so I'm going to go back inside real quick. Um, so we celebrated, we laughed, and um, we enjoyed some food. Um, I see you later. And um, we, uh, you know, just very uh, small and intimate. Um, and everything turned out really well. And I'm very um, happy for that. Um, now I did have some tears along the way, but you know, it was okay. Um, so everything turned out to be just the way it should have. So, um, and now I'm talking to you. And after this, I closed my night out. And, uh, maybe I'll have me a glass of wine or something. And, uh, you know, um, just reflect on good. Good, good. Well, I am glad that you were able to um, do the vigil in, um, in honor of him or remembrance of him. Um, and I do understand that today is the actual anniversary of his death, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, it is. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I can't imagine what you're feeling right now. Um, I've never lost a child um, to death and I, have, I don't know of anyone that has died um, or has been murdered because um, that's what happened to your son. I've never yeah. experienced that. So I want you to, to tell us, you know, how, how is that for you as a mother? And you said he was your oldest, correct? He is my oldest son. I'm gonna have a daughter. Um, she's 26 and Malik was 21. He'll, he would have turned 22 this year. Yeah. And then I have a younger son, his brother. Um, he just turned 21 this year. So they were a year apart and uh, it was like a five day period where they were the same age. And I swear Malik was, he hated it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us your, oh, sorry, sorry, very sorry. Um, tell us your, um, your son's full name. His name was oh Malik. Goodness. Well, his name is Malik. I don't know why that's doing that. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's Malik Hassan Clark, the second. So he was named after um, my ex-husband. Um, but yeah, he uh, renamed himself. So his uh, new self, his unofficial um, new name was Malik Jones Clark Neighborhood. I don't know where he made that name up, where he got it from, but we couldn't call him Malik Clark. It had to be Malik Jones Neighborhood. So that's Got that's it, got it. <laughs> it. Okay, was well, that maybe because he was repping his neighborhood? You told me that he was an artist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like your son was an amazing young man, that he sounds like he was very creative. You can see that he was a family man, um, beautiful smile, handsome boy. Um, take us back to that day. Tell us what happened. So um, last uh, year this time, I was sitting in the living room with a friend of mine and we were having some drinks and laughing and it was raining outside and um, had the TV on and um, like most people, when you see an unknown number pop up in your phone, you don't answer it. Well, something told me to just answer it. And uh, I answered it, and um, I don't know who it was, and they, I just got, um, Malik has been shot, goes to the hospital. And um, it was kind of like uh, everything went in slow motion. Uh, because at that point, I got up and I you know, looked at my friend and I said, um, he said, Malik just got shot. And I got up and um, told my husband, you know, they said Malik got shot. I need to go get my stuff and let's go. And he said, where are we going? I said, I don't know yet. <laughs> you know, so I went grab my stuff and 
when I went in the living room, my husband was still sitting there and I said, hey, didn't I just tell you Malik got shot? Let's go. And he's like, you know, oh, okay, yeah, really? And I said, yeah, I don't know. So I called the number back and I said, what hospital am I going to? And they said, um, forgot the hospital uh, downtown. And I said, okay, I'm on my way. Um, and it was raining. So I made it down there, but the location I made it to, the emergency room, they told me that he was in another part. And so I was like, God, that's inconvenient. Like I'm trying to get to my son, but something was just uh, not, I didn't have an urgency. Like, um, like it was almost like a peace. It's weird now that I think of it. And so I had, um, I um, got to the other part of the hospital, got to the front and um, I'm signing in. And as I'm signing in, and uh, I see two guys run up to the security guard and the security guard goes with these two little young guys. And I'm like, I wonder what's going on, but whatever. So they told us where to go, but nobody let us. So we walked up to the floor and I tell you, as soon as the elevator opened, it was just dark. It almost looked like the floor was abandoned. You know, it was fully stocked, but it was just abandoned. Nobody was there to say anything. It wasn't a night nurse or anything like that. And so we kind of walked through the hallways, kind of lost, and finally got to where we were supposed to be. And um, I rang the bell, and I told them where, who I was, and they came and let me in. And as I'm walking in, I see a team of doctors walk um, toward me and my husband. And um, I told him that, uh, I said, why are they looking at us like that? And uh, she said, are you Malik's father? He went to my husband first and he said, yes. And she said, I'm sorry. And I said, wait a minute, what are you sorry for? And she said, are you his mother? And I said, yes, I am. And she said, I'm sorry. I said, sorry for what? And she said, we couldn't save him. And um, the look in that doctor's face, I would have never, ever uh, want to be her or to have to tell somebody that kind of information, you know? Um, and so she said, would you like to go see him? And I said, no. And um, they had already taken my husband back because I just, um, I could not imagine me um, being able to ever get over that thought. Just the, um, just my son was gone. I didn't need to see that, you know? Um, and that's not how I had him, you know? And I don't want to see him that way. And so I, I sat there and it was so uh, unreal because it was uh, the whole doctor, the team, of people that tried to save him was there and they all um, was around me and we all prayed and that was just beautiful. Um, then it just dawned on me, I needed to catch my daughter <laughs> because she was coming and um, I needed to um, make some calls but I didn't know who to call. And so um, my daughter came off the elevator and I told her and it, she was very upset. And um, then my son came and I had to tell him and it was almost like that night um it wasn't real like I still have a hard time believing it you know you would think that you would have a police officer knock on your door right <laughs> or um you know um to have people lead you through you know and it was nobody there and it was just weird because that's not how it was supposed to be you know so um uh, my sister and um my youngest brother had come to the hospital as well and um we stayed there for a little bit to make sure everybody got a chance to, you know, say their goodbyes. And then we left and um, came back home. Yeah, but that was uh, a night to remember. I'm sure. Um, I, I, again, I can't imagine that feeling. I remember um, being there when my dad took his last breath. And I still have that visual in my, in my yeah. heart, in my mind. So I can't imagine it being my child. I, I don't think I would be able to handle that at no. all. <laughs> no mother should. And I, I would not trade this feeling with my worst enemy. And I got some people I really don't like, but I would not even yeah. want them to share this because this is, uh, the pain is horrendous. And, uh, you know, and um, yeah. 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 Um, what did they tell you happened? Well, um, there was a police officer at the hospital and he told me that my son had gotten shot getting out of a car. And uh, I said, do you know who shot him? And they said, no, uh, we don't know who shot him, but the police and stuff are still on the scene. So 
um, of course, I thought someone would reach out to me. Um, nobody reached out. So um, m- Monday morning, me and my sister, my husband and my daughter, we went down to the police station and uh, found out who the detective was and uh, talked to the detective and found out that was not how my son was killed. Um, okay, so was- I'm going to interrupt you for one second. So uh-huh. what day of the week was it when your son was killed? It was on a Saturday. And you didn't, no one called you, no one contacted you, and you went down and had to find out the information? I had to go down and find out the information, which was, it's, it's really just, I don't know any other word than disgusting because um, no compassion um, at all. Uh, and it's just, it's, that's a hard pill to swallow when um, you have to go find out information uh you know um yeah so that was tough so we went down that monday and i found out the detective and sat down and talked to him um and the next few things was um the only thing i can remember is sitting down with the detective and uh, him telling me that my son was in some type of um the only thing he knew that was uh it was a car and it was three people and um they shot my son um and so uh, he wanted information. You know, we, you know, I didn't have any information because uh, these people, I, you know, I don't even, I think my son may have known, but not somebody that he was friends with, definitely not somebody he brought home, you know? And so um, my daughter was able to go through uh, Facebook and some other people and, you know, Instagram and all those other kind of avenues to try to find information. And still, we're trying to get information for people we don't even we don't even associate with you know and it's just um trying to piece together information so what we were able to find out was um that my son was in some type of um social media um disagreement and um it was in regards i'm thinking to music i'm not sure um but one thing i know that my son worked every day and um, after he took care of his responsibilities, he saved his money and he paid for studio time, you know, and everything he got, he recorded it and, you know, he earned it. He paid for it. Not a way I may have not spent my money or you, but it's his money. So that's what he wanted to do. So he did. And he was proud of it. And so um, from what I from the information we gathered is that my son was just like, I'm just tired of going back and forth with y'all, you know, and he said, we're going to pull up. And um, my son was not a person that gun toting and wanting to shoot people. Um, he was a fighter. So if you wanted a, a good, fair one, he, you know, he'd catch him all day. Um, but he was not somebody that would, I don't think he, he knew that what type of danger he was facing. And, um, and then sometimes I think maybe he did know because that's why he was away from home, you know, at the time. But um, he got um, out the door of the apartment and, um, three guys in a, a car Jeep um, shot him and killed him and uh, pulled off. And um, out of the most cowardly act that you could have done, it took three of you to do something so cowardly to, um, I'm sorry, to, uh, to shoot somebody and then run, you know, that is, you can't even show your face and you have to hide it. And then um, it was, um, allegedly to be said that it was a a video going around or something about the same people with the same guns that had killed my son in some type of Facebook video. Um, And that's really sad because um, all of this information we handed over to that detective, Um, even the cell phone that was on my son that, that when he got killed, that they should have gotten at the scene, we got it and we gave it to him. And that in the whole case that the police department has is what we've given him. I would say at least 90% of that case. And they still tell me that somebody has to come forward and talk. So uh, we as taxpayers, we pay taxes for these cameras that go up on the, um, by the stoplights and uh, all that kind of stuff, but they couldn't find anything. Um, what's even more disgusting is um, once my son was shot down, his. Uh, the people that he was hanging out with at the time, his friends, they ran. Um, so the people that got my son and tried to save him were not the people that uh, his friends, they didn't even know him, they were perfect strangers. It was a birthday party going on. 
it was two Hispanic males. Um, I, to this day, I, I don't know who they are, but if I ever find out who they are, I just want to go and just hug them and love them and tell them thank you because they put my son in the car and he drove them to urgent care. And, um, you know, the doctors and the staff at urgent care, um, I was told didn't even have on proper PPE and they still tried to help my son. Everybody did everything, you know? Um, and so they transported him from urgent care to the hospital, but really that was, um, he was already gone. And uh, everybody tried to help, you know? And uh, the two people that showed up to the hospital that uh, they had blood on their clothes. One guy, he was so close to my son that he had my son on his clothes. And I don't want to be as de descriptive and, you know, um, have anybody have to deal with the thoughts I had to deal with. But um, any same people, you know, you were that close and you don't know who killed my son. That's not true. You can't say you're a friend because I don't know of any friends that I know have gotten gunned down or murdered, if I know anybody like that, that I will hold that and sleep on that. That's that's horrible. I don't even know how you can, I don't know how people do that. So yeah. um, I waited a, a few months and uh, I reached back out to the police department, to that detective and set up a meeting and I made sure to write down my questions and stuff because I was emotional and um, I went down and uh, me and my husband and I started out with my first question and um, he really couldn't give me an answer and I lost it. I wasn't cool and collected and uh, I asked for a supervisor and the supervisor came in and for um, I'd say about five months the detective made me think that um, he allowed me to think that someone transported my son from the crime scene to um, urgent care and just dropped him off at urgent care and left, you know, um, like he was a piece of trash. Like that, that haunted me for months and it wasn't true. Um, how could you let me think that? that that's horrible, you know? Um, so once I found out that was not true, that, you know, gave me a little bit more peace, but still somebody killed my son. Like he was a deer or something like, you don't, you don't kill what you don't eat. And I don't eat deer, so I don't kill deer, you know? So it's kind of, I'm uh, at a year out, no information. Um, I have no faith in the police department. Um, I have no faith in the justice system. Um, what I have found out is the three guys, um, they are arrested. They're currently in jail under uh, unrelated charges um, for robbery and I believe drugs, which sadly they'll probably go to jail for but murder they probably won't <laughs> you know um i don't want to be a conspiracy theorist because i don't know if it's population control or what but it is something to be said about the police not being active about um god black people killing black people like this black on black crime um is ridiculous but um in the midst of everything else like um they it's just they just don't act on it um, but I can tell you one thing, um, Tiffany, is everything, every, Malik's story has definitely reached out and touched a lot of people, and I'm thankful for that. Um, it's gotten as far as Canada, and um, it's a guy um, from Canada, him and his mother reach out, and they sent me stuff, and they sent me a song, and uh, I forgot the guy's name, but he is, um, a rapper slash rocker, I don't know, but that song brings me out a lot of days, and um. Some days I have to just sit and just reflect, um, but I'm not a parent that I will um, allow anybody to do anything to my kids without being responsible. And uh, it's taken me a long time to where I can speak without crying um, because I love everybody. I love uh, kids. I'm a kid person. Like, I don't know if you heard, but um, you know, little kids, all right, Miss Rachel, I'll see you later. Like, I love them. Like they, uh, you know, I always got kids around me. And um, I really am confused as to how somebody did this to my son because he was so loyal. He was a good, good guy. So um, so now I'm here. And uh, the first agency that reached out to me on Monday before the police was um, Victim Services of Charlotte, which is a great group of um, great staff and uh, offered to help me. And they've been um, really good support um I've had to go you know to counseling therapy even see a psychiatrist and I'm not ashamed to say that because I was in a really dark place 
um, I have three kids and I, I, I love them all the same. You love them different, you know? Um, Malik was definitely one that forced me to be a parent. I couldn't be, a, you know, a cookie cutter parent. I had to be unconventional. <laughs> I had to reach right. him, you know, um, in any way I could. Um, he got into some trouble, but you know, we'd be right there together and uh, we work it out and um, I miss him. I miss him having the opportunity to be a man, never family and um grow into his full potential in life they robbed him of that and i will hope that the three men who killed my son are doing they're doing something with their life because you took my son and uh i hope and pray that it's on their heart and their minds every day and i hope it haunts them until the day they're no longer here um because my son didn't deserve that you know so thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to just really speak to people and uh get my son's story out there I appreciate this so much okay I have some questions yes ma'am so it sounds like you're pretty sure of who killed your son I am why what is the police needing to charge these individuals with your son's murder? So and well, I'm I'll, the, I'll, ask, I'll ask this question first. Are you willing to share who the detective is? Um, I will, and I'm gonna get his, uh, his card out because um, I don't wanna mispronounce his name. Um, but I'm being told that it's, um, he has, somebody has to tell. Um, somebody has to tell, somebody has to tell. And uh, I know that there's been camera, there's cameras and I was told that there's witness statements and, um, but I'm gonna tell you when I first sat down and I uh, talked to this detective, he told me in the first 60 seconds that I met him, he said, this is not the first 48. Yeah. So I already knew what time it was. Um, was when he this, told me- Is this officer, I'm assuming this officer is Caucasian? Yes. He said it's not the first 48. So when he said that, I um I'm gonna be I, I'm realistic. I'm not a um I don't I dream, but I'm unrealistic. I know what's going on. And uh I know it's not the first 48, but um did you have to say that to a parent that just lost their child? It's not like I used to people get murdered around me all the time. Did you really have to say that to me? But I kept my cool because yeah, you I'm gonna be completely yeah, I'm going to be completely honest. If someone said that to me, I would have went across the table. <laughs> yeah. But that's just me. <laughs> yeah, you, know, I mean, I, you, you don't say that to someone. That's very, that's very demonic. <laughs> yeah, I when he that. said that. But that's I just, the best uh, word I can give. I, um, I, kind of, I, I looked at him and my sister was sitting next to me and my daughter and my husband was there. And I just, you know, I just kept my hands in my lap. And I'm uh, very close uh, because, again, I was right there next to the jail and uh, I couldn't go to jail right then. Um, so I just, you know, I just, you know, I knew what they expected. And so it's different when they expect um, you to behave a certain way. So uh, and then we talked to him and at the close of the meeting, um, I gave him a second chance to make it right. And I said, I reached out my hand to shake his hand and he ignored it. And then I said, I'm sorry, do you have a card? And um, he went in his wallet to get his business card. And when I reached out for the car, he put it on the table. Wow. And- uh, I had absolutely no respect for you at all. Um, to this day, he acts like he doesn't know what ha he did. And um, I'm not, I didn't make that up in my head. My sister, my husband and my daughter was there and they all saw it, you know? And it's, it's, uh, it's crazy because, um, when I met with him that second time, I said, you know, you told me that it's not the first 48. So can you elaborate and please explain to me what that meant? Oh, I don't remember saying that. No, you said that to me. And I'm gonna let you know, um, I absolutely expect this to be the first 48. Absolutely, I actually, I wanted this to be the first 24, 
you know, I want you to tell me because you already know who it is and you want somebody to talk and you know what in, in the black community, we have this stigma, stigma about snitching, um, you know, and so you already know. And so you apply this pressure to my family to go out there and do your work. And then you put your card on the table. Right. I already knew what it was. You gave him Malik's phone. From what, what you're saying, there were people brought him there. So people heard gunshots. He had friends with him. You told there, me he can't y'all, force anybody, yeah, he can't force anybody to talk. Y'all know that there was an argument. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a lot of evidence to me. It's... um. Facebook conversations or, or Instagram, some type of social media conversations. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. And I'm so confused. And so we sit here and, um, you know, I'm just disappointed as a whole because as Black people, we really don't understand the influence we have. You know, um, I didn't think about it, but, um, you know, there's a prosecutor that we probably, we voted in. Um, I know I pushed hard for Mayor Vilaos that wouldn't even set up a meeting with me. Mm. Um, the chief of police, that's another black man that I rooted hard for to get in office, wouldn't even take a, and you, I forgot the other guy, um, I am homicide. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was, uh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I voted for him too. And uh, I watched his show and I was a big fan of his and uh I couldn't even get a meeting with him either. So it's, it's, um, I, I'm, I'm struggling right now, to, to be honest with you. I am, uh, I see why um, we just don't get any respect. I fought for years um, as a single parent when I first moved here to Charlotte um, so that people would see me as something other than a single parent. Um, they didn't know that I was married and my kids was from a previous marriage and I had left because of domestic violence. I had made it here with, um, with literally the clothes on my back um, and barely my life. And I started from the bottom and I worked up and my kids never went hungry and they always had clothes on their back and we went places and we went to the zoo and we enjoyed that. You know, we did the planetarium and we went to birthday parties and the beach and, you know, but when I got in there, he didn't see me as a parent that had been to meetings with first son and um, birthday parties and celebrated good times just as well as the bad times we went through. He saw me as a black woman that, you know, your son just got murdered and there's nothing I can do. Um, and and uh, it's real ironic that the same week that my son was murdered, um, another um, person in Charlotte, it's a white male in Charlotte, um, restaurant owner, um, they got murdered and they found his killer. Um, nobody talked, do you use camera? And so, um, you know, I have to swallow that in the midst of uh, coronavirus and um, the hate that we have against us as women, black women and just the black, our black men getting killed in the street, not only by the police, but by our, by our own people. You know, we just, you know, it's just sad the state of the nation, but the state of my people today. I don't want to get on here and sound pro-black, but I'm just like, I just... I expect more from us, you know, and I know we can do better. And uh, so it's my job right now to, um, ex- you know, put myself in a position where I can help other mothers um, become more versed uh, with the law, um, you know, know how to get involved. Um, I've actually thrown myself in a few uh, groups with uh, women that I normally would have not have connected with. Um, I recently joined a Zoom meeting. Um, it was customer service and um, consumer behavior or something. Um, I paid for the meeting to get in and I had no, no clue what I was signing up for, but I was in the group of about 90 Black people, professionals. And so that gave me hope um, that we can pull through. We're going to make it again so um, that I can push through. And I got a lot of people that's, that's backing me and it's going to help me. So I'm happy, you know, I'm happy sad but I'm happy yeah um I know you know I know that you're doing a lot to um find justice for your son um what um precinct was this officer in um the uh east uh precinct um and give me one second um Nini the officer's name and his uh super 
and his supervisor's name. Um, Detective Lyons is the uh, the detective that's handling my son's case. Um, I have not spoke to him much after those first few meetings, so I talked to his supervisor, um, which is uh, Sergeant Rivera. Um, I have um, some things that I'm going to post on my Facebooks because people were interested in writing letters and stuff like that, sending emails, and I'm going to post that. But Detective Lyons is the lead detective on the case. Um, okay. I so, asked him. Yeah, detect Detective Lyons, and he's out of the East Precinct, you said? Yes, ma'am. Okay. He uh, Last name is L-Y-O-N-S. And who's his supervisor? Um, Sergeant Rivera. Sergeant Rivera. And so you haven't gotten anywhere with him either, the sergeant? No. He says, and I, I spoke to him uh, when I was in the, that first official meeting after, well, the second meeting that I met with Detective Lyons. And uh, he's the one who kind of cleared everything up. Well, he did clear everything up. He let me know my son just wouldn't drop there. You know, he was, somebody actually took him there. And the difficulty was, is that he didn't have his wallet on him because those same friends took the wallet out of his pants in front of the detective <laughs> it's crazy so nobody knew but um they tried to help him you know and it's uh but anyway he cleared it up and um when i spoke to him he said um he basically backed his officer um, which i expected no different i said you know i just would expect a different level of respect you know i'm not a criminal i went i don't go out here robbing and stealing from people um, I just want to be respected and I want to see that you're working on it. Well, he's working on it. And every time he tell, he told me something, it always turned into the next week and the next week, nobody's holding him accountable. What happened yeah. to the video? Then he told me, now he tells me that there's no video. They weren't able to get video and it's a year after. You didn't know that in the beginning. And so this is seeing, and I'm, I'm asking you these questions because I like to follow up with things and try to <laughs> Um, reach out to people that I have connections with. Um, yeah. So I'm looking at CMPD East or is it East Way Division? It should be uh, East. East um, but they, they have it split up because they just uh, opened up a new precinct. So maybe they split us um, because okay. I'm right here on that Charlotte Mint Hill line kind of. Okay, yeah. But so I can definitely send that information to you. Yes, Absolutely. I definitely would like that information. Um, because I would like to, I'm gonna share this video with some officers that I know and some people that I know um, because I, I, I don't understand either that you have this that has happened. Mom is pretty sure that she knows who killed her son. She's giving you evidence that you should have collected or had mm -hmm. and still nothing. And obviously these, these boys, I'm not going to call them men because they're boys. Right. <laughs> are in jail right now. So they have records. Right. One of them know. even is in federal hold. And he said that his attorney won't allow him to speak. And I'm like, are you serious? I mean, it's just, um, and I know it's laws that cover us all. You know, I get that. But we're talking about something totally different now. And, right. um, you know, even down to the, um, there was personnel inside the urgent care that actually shared private information about my son to, my daughter called urgent care to find information about my son, you know, who, who dropped him off there. Um, the receptionist put her on hold and then came back and told her everything, blow by blow, detail by detail. What happened wow. to HIPAA? Yeah. So I called back up to urgent care. My daughter was very upset. She recorded the conversation. They told her everything, even though they should not have told her that. Um, that's the way we found out all the missing pieces about him coming and he didn't have any ID and the, the staff actually went out and helped him without PPE on because they were trying to save him and, you know, they were really trying to get to know his name so that they can notify people. They were trying to do everything, but the friends that were right there with him would not give any information. They came to urgent care well after the fact before the ambulance came to get my son um, and didn't say anything. Well, maybe that was a blessing that she gave all that information. Absolutely. I was a little bit yeah. upset, but then I couldn't get so upset. But that yeah. it was so easy for us to get that information. My point, um, why couldn't he go and get that information? Why hadn't right. they gone and interviewed these people? And they did not. Right. 
Right. Um, have you filed a, an official complaint against the detective? Um, I have not filed an official complaint with the detective. Um, I have somebody helping me write that up. Um, I just want to make sure that um, everything is what like it should be um, when I send that complaint off because I want them to take it serious. I don't want it to just get tucked under somebody's draw. Um, I've been fighting real bad, Tiffany. I know we had um, uh, first Zoom meeting, um, our podcast schedule, and um, I, it didn't turn out. Um, it's been an emotional roller coaster. And I'm sure when I have good days, I jump on it and I try to get as much stuff as I can get done. But some days, um, it's days that I go and I don't even sleep. You know, I can't sleep because I have my son on my mind so heavy. Um, and it gets really, really lonely because, um, you know, when my son passed, everybody told me, call me. You know, if you want to cry, you call me. Um, but people really don't want to hear you crying in their ear, honestly. And so after um, I got tired of crying in people's ear and I realized that people really didn't want to hear it, I stopped calling people. <laughs> because... Um, I, I, I don't want to think that they did it um, out of just being a mean spirited person. I don't want to think that. Um, but I know I needed a few people and um, they were not there. And uh, I don't know if they just didn't want to hear the pain in my voice is what I'm, I'm hoping. Um, but definitely my life has changed and it'll never be the same. Um, I spent a lot of days by myself. Sometimes, sometimes that's good. I have some puppies now. Um, <laughs> my dog, my son loved dogs. So, um, I'm looking into opening up a um, kennel, um, um, specializing in, uh, ESA dogs, emotional support animals. I was approved for one. Um, she's around here barking somewhere. She's the cutest <laughs> little thing. Um, so, um, anything to keep me busy. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, no, this is, this is your interview. This is your platform. Um, so how, what is it that we can do? Because I know when we were first introduced by Brandon, I believe, he introduced mm -hmm. me because you wanted to do an event and then COVID came. Yeah. So what is it that you are needing? Because I, I really feel, and I really hope and pray too, that those people that said that they would be there aren't there because maybe the pain mm -hmm. is too much for them yeah or maybe it was just too much to hear you cry because they care about you but mm -hmm. then unfortunately in situations like this we really find out who our who our true friends are and who our true <laughs> family is and yeah. not always yeah. is family blood so <laughs> yeah you know I, I I'm I'm just gonna be blunt that's the truth you know I yeah. did two things and thought I was gonna have friends there for me and they were nowhere to be found Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that sounds like that's been the case for you. And I hate that for you. Yeah, um, me too. So what are some things that you have going on now that you need help with? And what are some things that maybe you feel you need to delegate or you need oh, help with from somewhere? Great, from thank somewhere? You. great question. Um, so um, I have some uh, real business savvy chicks. I call them my homegirls that I hang out with up here. Um, mm -hmm. Veronica, um, Miss Diva, she owns her Diva Salon. She's kind of keeping me uh, in line with helping me put my business structure together so I can get this business going. Um, I also have another friend, Sue, here. She's helping me do the, the business stuff too and helping me kind of stay on track um, and organize because I'm all over the place and I can fill up a notebook in a minute. <laughs> with a whole bunch of stuff right, what's your business? What are you <laughs> um, to do? well with the kennel I want to do with the kennel and then okay. I have the okay. dresses for Malik shirts and I want to support his page so the next project I have um I kind of jumped out the window with the t-shirts um and kind of just put it out there and started taking orders and did not order a supply or anything I did not understand what I was getting myself into I just wanted to do something um and surprisingly um people started coming People started supporting me. Um, what my first neighbor when I first my first apartment, uh, Rochelle King, she was the first one to do a donation um, from a friend, and I hadn't seen her in years. She lost her son in a um, car accident, um, and I remember when he was a boy. And um, the first family member who supported me actually is my little cousin Danielle. She lives in Florida, and she's a little feisty thing, but I love her spirit. And um, she was like, absolutely. And then just donations started coming in, and so. I'm literally making t-shirts and crying, you know, and then I would get to a stopping point and then um, 
things just started opening up. So I was able to get a shipment out um, this last week and I'm gonna get another shipment out. Um, so that's what I'm working on there. My next step is to, um, I spoke to you briefly about a podcast because I definitely think it's a platform. Um, so my help now is kind of reaching out and kind of um, looking for people like you so I can learn from, so I can give other moms platforms so that they can speak and we can get the word out because um, unfortunately and, and fortunately at the same time, um, people have been removed from my life, but people have been placed in my life too. And um, I've met a lot of really good women through um, victim services and they have been phenomenal. And um, they keep me going. And so um, I think by my way of giving back would be to um, do a podcast, giving them an opportunity to speak. I'm not sure how many, like every week or once a month or, um, so I have some information on that. Um, my next thing is I'm going to be reaching out to my seamstress and all my cricket people um, because I am gonna start, my next project is crafts for, I mean, mask. And it's going to say um, just something on it, maybe Justice for Malik or maybe Forever Young. That was his thing. That was a theme of tonight, Forever Young, because he said, I'll never get old. Mom, always going to be young. Uh -huh. He was 21. And so yeah. he was Forever Young. So um, and I uh, send those out and um, the money that's donated, I just use it for the next project. And it's just about getting the word out. Um, the sale, the profits from the mask on the next project will go to support another project that I have, which is um, making prayer pillows for um, other mothers that um, lose their kids. Um, because I have a pillow that um, of my family, not my family, my friends at work had gotten together and made me. And um, whenever you're crying, I know it sounds really corny, but I have a blanket with my son's pictures on it and a pillow and uh, with a really nice point. And I'm telling you, I snuggle up like a biggest cornball. I don't even care, but that it makes me feel beautiful. so good. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure that somebody else is going to enjoy that corny moment, too. So yeah. um, I actually um, I ordered a few test uh, samples for some pillows and um pillowcases and to see what I want to do with that and um, I've spoke with victim services and some of those ladies so they're going to help me with that so to answer your question I'm going to um, probably bug you a little bit more um, to just kind of tag on along with you I've signed up a few of your pages I'm loving your life um, mm -hmm. I love how you um, share details but you don't share every detail and that's right uh, <laughs> and so um I just want to learn how to be more versed so that I can put myself in a position where I can help other people so whether it's me protesting at a rally or going to support a mother at court um which that's something that we do as well um I'll use my vacation time now to be in court you know um not allowing people to get off on bail for murdering people um yeah. I do also want to say um that's another issue is our court right. systems. Um, one mother, um, I'm not gonna say her name, but her um, son's murderer is actually, he got out on, he's on house arrest. He never even went to jail. And um, he had the audacity <laughs> to request a hearing because he wants to come off house arrest so he can work. Wow, that's great, right? That you can, you even have a option to request that when a right. person can even, right. you know, work. I love you too. Um, so, you know, um, supporting other mothers and just the justice system does not work for us and just um, preparing for my day, if that day ever comes. Um, I write my statement that I'm going to say to the judge on sentencing day, I already have it prepared. And I go in there and I make edits often because <laughs> yeah. I'm ready, you know? So um, just whatever, put myself in a position where I can help other people. That's all I want to do. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So um, I know, you know, I'm, I'm just a small girl when it comes to my podcast. I have loyal, <laughs> lo loyal, loyal watchers, loyal followers, but I know some other um, amazing podcasters that I just tagged in our, in the comments. And uh -huh. I'm going to follow up with them and I'm going to introduce okay. you to them and I'm going to be very okay. persistent with them, which I don't think I'll have to be too persistent because they're amazing people. <laughs> um, Great. And they like supporting people who are doing good things in the community, but also yeah. people who need a voice. And so nice. um, I'm calling them out right now. 
Ms. Allie <laughs> Virtuous, Mr. James Thompson, and Mr. Jonathan Coleman. I just tagged them. And I'm nice. going to ask them to reach out to you so that they can get you on their platforms um, because they have amazing followings and um, huge followings. And I think that their platforms would be um, perfect for what you what your voice needs to say. Um, I'm also going to reach out to some of my CMPD friends and a couple of other people who I feel should have some kind of influence in some way, shape, or form. But you've reached out to the right people that are not giving you the time of day, which I don't and have. I have. But that uh, made and, me very mad. And when I get yeah. mad, I do things. And that is get in contact with yeah. people <laughs> that need to be contacted. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing that I have gotten, I, um, now it's, it is a, a group, Anissa Perry, she um, runs VAST a group mm -hmm. out of um, Burlington, I believe, North Carolina, but she has um, been able to um, mediate and uh, get someone to call me, but you calling me and telling me the same thing is not helping me. Right. Um, you know, I need for, I really need to know what are you waiting on to apply pressure? You know, mm -hmm. have you even ever, have you even questioned them? That mm -hmm. has not happened. Um, but telling me, well, they're in jail under unrelated charges, that doesn't help me. It, it it doesn't um yeah, to know realistic to really yeah. realistically they'll go to jail for robbery drugs but murder probably not and it'll get kind of swept under the rug because of covid and um you know everything else we got going on i'm like you know son malik i love you but why really did you have to get killed right now <laughs> like this is not a good time like i yeah it's uh you know not like it is ever a good time but man um it's like it's um everything is hell else is happening i even um jumped on some um groups and um someone said black on black crime does not exist and it absolutely right. does exist that, that's it, i don't know where they got that from I, I don't get that <laughs> you know um it is um you know i'm not saying my son was a big big rap artist he sure wasn't puffy or biggie or jay-z this is what he loved to do and I supported him, you know, and uh, nobody deserves to die over music. Um, it's definitely sad. Um, it's a sad state that our kids are in now to where that's the only choice that they have is to murder somebody. And it's yeah. not just me, sadly enough. It's, uh, I know a few family, a few people that have lost their kids to gun violence. Um, and it's just, it's sad. I just, I don't understand it. So whatever I need to do um, to put myself in a place, because I definitely know that there's a lot of breaks in the system, um, just knowing from going through it with my own son. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot of breaks in the system. Um, I wanna also share with you, Tiffany, that he went through a time where he was in court a lot for um, getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. And um, it is very sad that me and my husband came to court and we'd come to court and we wouldn't have our bellies out or um, raggedy clothes on. We'd come to court with, you know, how are you supposed to come to court? How I was raised, just slacks, you know, right. suit possibly tie. Right. And um, that worked to our disadvantage because um, if my son got five charges, five charges got dismissed just because me and my son, me and my husband showed up and we weren't looking like, um, you know, anything. You know, right. they look at us and say, well, their parent, his parents are here dismissed. Honestly, I wanted my son to, to know some type of consequences because right. um, the only consequence he had was me. So the justice right. system failed all around because they set our kids up to think you don't have consequences because you're not 18. Right. But when you turn 18, yeah, they're going to hammer it down on those consequences. You're going to wonder what happened, you know, and that's exactly right. what happened to my son. Yeah. 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 Um, I uh, definitely. Um, I feel that we're connected now. We we talk we talk on a regular now for the last yeah. few months, um, and you know checking in with you. And I didn't know that you knew Lakeisha, and so you know yeah. that just reconfirmed that you're an amazing woman because you're friends with Thank her. Thank you. She, I she, love her. She she doesn't deal with fake people, so no, I knew that you I knew that you were legit when I <laughs> when she said, yeah. "Oh, you know Rachel." I was like, "Yeah, I know Rachel." <laughs> I love her. I love her. I yeah. always wanted to. We work together, but I always wanted to just kiss her face. Like she 
it's just a sweet person. And um, if I would have kissed her face, she probably would have taken me to HR or something like this crazy lady, but she is just a sweet person. And I'm just, uh, I hate, she's going through the struggle she's going through, but um, her and her husband and her family, they're, they're some good people. And uh, I know she's going to get through this. I pray for her all the time. Yeah, you know, just thank you for that. making that happen because I know she was she was surprised. She was. Um, she was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I've already started reaching out to the three people I told you about. Two of them I've already okay. answered already. Nice. Um, I love that. So it. they James said that he already has a November date for you. Nice. Um, okay. And so he's going to reach out to you and talk to you about that date. Um, Jonathan okay. Coleman, he's the founder of Blacktopia. He's going to okay. reach out to you. And I just mm-hmm. told him that um, I will pay for some promo for you. Oh, wow. Um, Thank you, Tiffany. No problem. He's going to reach out to you. Jonathan is an amazing person. He does a lot of my promo for um, Butterfly Visions Project and now my new lingerie line. He's been doing promo it. for that. Um, uh-huh. So he, Jonathan is an amazing person. He's loyal. Um, he's going to stand by you. He's going to follow you. You're, he's not going to go anywhere. Once he starts nice. working with you, he continues to work I love with you. That. Uh-huh. Um, James is amazing. He's on my board for Butterfly Visions Project. He has a huge following, a huge voice, and he's a great. very God-fearing, faithful man. Um, so he's a great connection for you. And I'm sure Allie will reach back out to you um, okay. because she's an amazing woman. Um, she was one of the first podcasts I was on when I published my book. So nice. um, she's awesome. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I want to, I'm thinking of people and I want to start connecting you with some people that I that's think great. might be able to help otherwise than who I've already told you about. So um, that's great. How can people get in contact with you? How can they follow your journey? Um, how can people see what's going on with Justice for Malik? Tell us, tell us how we can find you and, and learn more about what you're doing for Malik. Okay, great. Thank you. So um, I have uh, some things that I'm going to be updating tomorrow. I'm going to be actually posting tomorrow. I already have them on um, Facebook. I'm going to start posting ways that people can reach out and uh, contact people in regards to Malik, but also uh, finding out ways that they can uh, reach out in their own community to try to become more active. We cannot do anything sitting on the couch and uh, posting on Facebook of how frustrated we are. You know, we can be frustrated, but stop complaining if you're not doing anything. I agree. You know, that's just the biggest thing. Like, (laughs) stop complaining if you ain't doing nothing. You know, Um, I've seen some (laughs) disgusting stuff, people. I'm not going to go to a visual. You know, I remember the way she talked to her son, but um, with other people. Um, But nonetheless, if you're not out there, active you can't talk and right. the saddest thing is that if it happens to you it's you don't want that feeling so um uh the page is um what happened to malik um there's also a, a email is what happened to malik at gmail.com um i can be reached either way um i will post updates facebook is really the only thing that i've been consistent with um, and then I'll expand it to Instagram and, you know, the other avenues. Um, my daughter and my son helped me out a lot with that, but they're still healing. So that's a little, you know, I go on their, their timeline. So Facebook is really the biggest way. Um, and then I will, uh, your, I, I shared my personal cell phone number with you and you can share those with the people that you um, tagged. Um, they can reach me out to that way as well. I am working on a telephone number. Um, I have a Thursday uh, meetup with uh, one of my friends and we go over everything. So um, my Thursday meetup this week is to set up my Google telephone number and all that other kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm telling you, I have to, somebody has to keep me, you know, (laughs) um, constantly keep me on board. So we either meet through Zoom or she comes Mm -hmm. here. So once I have that, again, I will post that on uh, uh, Facebook as well. Very nice. Very nice. Um, this is not going to be the last time you're going to be on the podcast. Um, I definitely want to continue this journey with you. Um, I'm going to say now that I'm going to be slowing down. Um, we, my family, we have a baby on the way. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. <laughs> so, thank you. We are eight weeks and we just got um, some good information tonight. We're going to be sharing. 
So um, we have a baby on the way. I'm doing my internship. So I'm going to be slowing down pretty drastically. But the Speak Up Inspire series is not going to go away. Um, I always take a break November and December every single year. Um, So I want to make sure that you are one of the first that we check in on um, in January when we start back up. Um, But meanwhile, I want to connect you with some of um, some people like I've already done what I've what I'm doing tonight. Um, If anyone is listening and you know of any contacts, we definitely need a contact that can do something in CMPD to push some buttons. If you know anybody, um, please share. Please reach out to me or reach out to um, Miss Rachel because um, basically this is being swept under the rug. And um, we need justice. She needs justice. Her family needs justice. And these young men have a record. So, you know, there's there's a reason to look into them. And there's obviously evidence. Mom is pretty certain that she knows who killed her son. So why is this not getting looked into? When what happened? We need to know why nothing is being done. So if you know any influencers, if you know anybody in CMPD, if you know anybody in um, Charlotte uh, City Government, if you know anything that can be of any benefit to Miss Rachel and her family, please reach please. out to her. Please reach out to her. Um, don't be silent because people being silent is the reason why she's not getting justice. Um, sorry, sorry. Please speak up do something. Um, Don't just sit back and talk about it. Do something. Um, This could be my son. This could be your son. (laughs) You know, we, and this is not something that we want to wish on anyone, like Ms. Rachel said, but we need people to speak up and we need people who can make some changes and people that can make some movement. And, um, you know, we need some connections for Ms. Rachel so she and her family can get justice for Malik. Um, Nobody should have to bury their their child. Nobody. White, black, Spanish, Asian, no race, anybody, nobody should have to bury their son. Um, so Ms. Rachel, I'm very happy that we were able to um, have this time together. And um, I want you to continue sharing. Please tag us, speak up and inspire us here. Please tag us. And any updates, I will definitely see it. Please let me know what you need. Um, please don't hesitate. Um, I will. Yeah. Thank you me, so much. I need to just a circle because I want to do what I can. You know, absolutely. And and same here, Tiffany. I appreciate it so much. And uh, yes, just ma'am. being included. Um, I want to say this too that. Some of the people that I'm connected with, I probably would have never been connected with had it been my absolute choice, but it is nothing wrong with changing your circle because oh, the true. treasure that you can find, you know, when you're used to used to the same people all the time, you're going to get the same thing. But when you put yourself under different environments, you start seeing things and things reveal, are revealed to you that I wouldn't change, you know, so I thank you for... Um, uh, I believe it was LaWanda K. I'm not sure. I want to say LaWanda is who referred me to you. Um, or it may have been Lakeisha, but um, whoever did it, um, I, you know, I'm glad I was connected to them because they led me to you. And, um, and then you gave me another idea about a podcast that I can use my voice in that way, you know, and uh, just thankful for all the people that have helped me help me grow. It's been a year, but I tell you, I've learned so much in this year that I never wanted to know, um, but it's definitely helped me and I plan on helping somebody else. So that's, that's what my purpose is, um, to put myself in a place where I can help other people and avoid yes, other mothers going through the same hurt. How can we Thank get you the again. shirts and how much are they? Um, well, the shirts, I have closed them out, but I will, um, I have some other ones that I'm working on. I can post it for you. Okay. Um, they just message me on uh, Facebook. It's just a small $10 donation. Um, it's just basically get the word out. Um, so just inbox me your size and I can shoot your shirt. Um, anybody else interested, just inbox me and um, I'll reply with whatever inventory I have left. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. And um, when we end, um, let's talk about some January dates. And um, I'm going to make sure that you're connected to the three individuals that we spoke of. Um, and and thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm I'm praying for you. I've been praying for you, and I'll continue to pray for you. 
that you um, find just. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody for tuning in and listening. And uh, thank you for just giving me this platform. So uh, I hope you have, yes, have a good night, Tiffany. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, and do welcome. I have permission to share this with, um, with several people, not just on Facebook, but just some people, some key contacts. Is that okay? Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Please thank do. You. Thank you so much. Well, <laughs> All right, thank talk you. to you soon. Have a good night. You too. Goodbye. Thank you everybody for um, sitting in and listening um, as we talk to Miss Rachel about um, her son's murder back in October of 2019. Please, if you know anyone that can be of any help, any help in government and CMPD, um, legal connections, uh, t-shirt connections, um, doing websites, doing posts, Instagram, so forth and so on, any way, shape, or form that you can help Miss Rachel, please reach out to me or, or reach out to her personally um, and make the connection so that we can find out what really happened with Malik and have justice for Malik. Good night, everybody.